natural beauty and the solitude and the solace of these national parks is really precious. The utter power of this place, the glaciers, the rivers, the water, all these forces working together are what keeps me here and keeps me happy to be here. It's awe-inspiring. It's, it's powerful. These are places to find yourself and to contemplate problems and issues that we deal with in our lives. It's beautiful and inspiring, but also it's really important that we try to understand what some of the impacts are on the natural world around us. We're getting to that point now where it's easier and easier to spot so-called global warming on the scale of, say, Western North America. But at this point, we can't identify on any national park uh, the warming as strictly due to human activity. The fact that the atmosphere can shift heat around from place to place makes it difficult to interpret the weather records at a given location as proof or disproof of global warming. But from a scientific standpoint, we can say the evidence that humans have impacted global climate by causing a warming of 3 quarters of a degree Fahrenheit over the last 50 years, it's very, very solid is pretty inescapable from the weather records we have and from the other evidence like retreating glaciers and shrinking snowpack and so on. The key to the formation of glaciers is snowfall and cold temperatures. And the reason that there are so many glaciers in the North Cascades are that the mountains are high but we get incredible amounts of snow in the winter. And it's that snow on the top of the glacier that eventually turns into the glacial ice. And that transition takes time and it takes burial of snow year after year, but then the glacier exists in that balance between accumulation of snow in the winter and melting in the summer. Research is a critical part of this understanding of glaciers, snowpack, and climate change. And so as the climate has warmed in the last half century or more, we've seen less snowfall and more rainfall in the winter which is bad for the glaciers, but we're also seeing more melting in the summer. And so it's this combined effect of less accumulation in the winter and more melting that makes glaciers such dramatic indicators of climate change. The future of glaciers is pretty dim here, although we've got a lot of ice left. In the last hundred years, we figure we've lost about 45% of our glacier area. With continuing trends of warming climate, we'll see the continued loss of our glaciers and really the loss of the water they provide to our lakes and streams. The Skagit River has been blessed by a large amount of cold water. One of our concerns is what happens when we lose the source of those cold water temperatures, which is the snowpack and glaciers. Climate change will be reducing glacial runoff. Flows during the fall period, when bolt trout and chinook spawn, are going to be lower than they are right now. The other major changes during the spring, they're going to be higher peak flows. The extreme events, the high highs, the low lows, cause mortality either to eggs, to spawners, or to the juvenile fish. In the last five to 10 years, we've seen the greatest amount of hydrological variability we've seen in the last 70 in this watershed. We've also seen a substantial decline in steelhead and in bull trapped. And those declines very strongly relate to peak flow events and low flow events that have occurred in the last few years here. One more factor that needs to be looked at is the combined effect of climate change on flows and temperature. And that, in fact, is probably where we're gonna see the greatest impact on fish in the long term. Low flows are more likely to warm than higher flows. So the combination of low flows and warm air temperatures is going to result in much higher stream temperatures and river temperatures than we've experienced in the past.
many fish, many aquatic invertebrates have a threshold. There's a maximum temperature that they can tolerate. Above that temperature, we don't see many fish anymore. There is a link between snowpack glaciers and fish, and that's cold water and good, healthy flows. And we'll start losing that connection in the future if we start losing our snowpack and our glaciers. As glaciers retreat with climate change, it exposes a lot of sediment. And over time, the bed of the river is building up. This is called aggradation. Glaciers are constantly moving downhill. And as they do that, they incorporate rock. And they're very erosive. And they're constantly grinding the mountain down. So the glaciers both plucking the rocks and grinding the rocks and then delivering the rocks right to the base of the glacier where the river starts, giving a huge amount of sediment that's available for the river to then take the rest of the way downhill. Basically, there's so much sediment that the river's constantly dropping material and then moving over a little bit, but the overall picture is that the whole valley is rising through time. What's been happening more recently is our glaciers have been retreating. And when the glaciers retreat, they've actually been spawning things called debris flows, which are very destructive landslides. The first thing you notice near a debris flow is it sounds like a, a roaring freight train. And it's this very dark, slurry, almost chocolatey, and it's very viscous and thick. And literally, boulders will be popping up and floating. Also, there is so much momentum and strength that you can break old growth trees a couple hundred years old and throw them around like matchsticks. These debris flows can cause what we call it a hyper-aggradation or an accelerated aggradation. We can get up to five feet just in one day. Our stream banks, the sides of the streams, aren't getting any higher, but our bed is. It's almost like you're raising the bottom of your bathtub but trying to put the same amount of water in. So there's just less capacity for the river. So that means floods are going to be worse because a lot of that water that used to be contained in the river goes over bank where it's prone to erode a road or flood out a building. I think this is actually going to be an emerging issue both inside and outside the park and even regionally. I think for the park though it's going to make it very difficult to maintain the road system that we have now in the place that it is because the aggradation is going in one direction and it's certainly increasing. So that's going to pose a problem probably for decades.